uh, raffle for the door prize. Wow. Christine has all the names here. Now, Sean, uh, John Seamus won last year, so if he's around and wants to pull out the name, you want to roll over the Actually, we're going to have Madison oh. and Tegan Santo. Oh, all right. But you already picked somebody. Oh, and I don't think anyone knows what the door prize is, but we'll find out in a second. So thank you to Seamus and Liam for shaking this up and good luck. One, we just choose one and then you read the name. Adele. Oh. <laughs> All you need to know is your numbers, and you match the numbers with the numbers on the song, and you can play ten different Christmas songs. Oh, okay, so I think next what we're going to do is our sort of semi-traditional, if we're not doing this, we're doing the other reading, but we're going to do our little Charlie Brown video. <laughs> A Charlie Brown Christmas. The, house, the houses were strung with teeny colored lights, their windows shining with warm yellow glow only Christmas could bring. The scent of pine needles and hot cocoa mingled together. Wafting through the air in the sweet sounds of Christmas carols could be hear, heard in the distance. Fluffy white snowflakes tumbled from the sky into the group of joyful children as they sang and laughed skating on a frozen pond in town. Everyone was happy. The full <laughs> holiday chair. That's it, except for Charlie Brown. I think there must be something wrong with me. I just don't understand Christmas, I guess. I might be getting presents. I, I might be getting presents and sending Christmas cards and decorating trees and all that, but I'm still not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Maybe Lucy's right. All of the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. <laughs> Charlie Brown walked through the snow, thinking about what Linus had said. When he reached his mailbox, Charlie Brown hopefully poked his head inside. It was empty. Rats, nobody sent me a Christmas card today. I know nobody likes me. Why do I have to have a, ho why do I have to have a holiday season to emphasize it? <laughs> Violet was also outside, enjoying a wintry snowfall, and reading a holiday card she had just received. Thanks for the Christmas card you sent me, Violet. I didn't send you a Christmas card, Charlie Brown. Don't you know sarcasm when you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Brown walked past the houses on his street, and he could not help but notice all the other friends storing snowballs, building snowmen, and catching snowflakes on their tongues. Everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves, but Charlie Brown was still sad. Desperate to discuss his inappropriate holiday mood, Charlie Brown sat down on the stool in front of Lucy's psych psychology, uh, psychiatric booth. I'm in sad shape. Five cents, please. <laughs> Boy, I love the sound of cold, high cash. That beautiful standard, beautiful sound nickels, nickels, nickels. That beautiful sound of plunking nickels. Now, what seems to be our problem? Charlie Brown told her that he knew that he should be happy during Christmas, like everyone else. But he hadn't just seemed to manage it. Lucy was entirely ready to diagnose his problem. Well, as they say on TV, the mere fact that you realize that you need help indicates that you are not too far gone. I think we need to pinpoint your fears. If we find out what you're afraid of, we can label it. Are you afraid of responsibility? Uh, if you have that, then you are high, I can't pronounce that one, hypogenophobia. How about cats? Hmm, if you are, then you have chromatophobia. Maybe you just have thoracophobia. That is the fear of the ocean, or geographophobia, which is the fear of crossing bridges. Or maybe you have plantophobia. Do you have plantophobia? What's pentaphobia? The fear of everything! That's it! <laughs> Actually, Lucy, my trouble is Christmas. I just don't understand it. Instead of feeling happy, I still feel sort of let down. You need involvement. You need to get involved with some real Christmas project. 
Yes. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Me? You want me to be the director of the Christmas play? Sure, Charlie Brown. We need a director. You, we've got a shepherd, musicians, admirals, everyone we need. We've even got a Christmas queen. <laughs> Charlie Brown hesitated. What did he know about properly directing a Christmas play? Don't worry, Charlie. I'll be here to help. Charlie Brown thought for a moment. Maybe he did need to get involved with the holiday project in order to feel better about things. Lucy's confidence was almost contagious. Besides, he couldn't let everyone down. They needed him. Figuring that he had nothing to lose, Charlie Brown agreed to meet Lucy and the rest of the cast later in the auditorium. Incidentally, I know how you feel about Christmas business, getting depressed and all that. It happens to me every year. I never really got what I wanted. I always get a lot of stupid toys or bicycle or clothes or something like that. What do you want? Real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Just then, Charlie Brown noticed his dog Snoopy passed by, hauling a large brown box overflowing with colorful holiday lights and decorations. He followed Snoopy back to his doghouse and watched the dog begin to create a large display of ornaments and lights on his roof. What's going on here? Snoopy, Snoopy handed him a flyer. It said, find the true meaning of Christmas. Win money, money, money. That's spectacular. <laughs> Super colossal neighborhood Christmas lights and display contest. Good grief, even my very own dog has gone commercial. As he walked away, Charlie Brown ran into his little sister, Sally. I've been looking all over for you, big brother. Will you please write a letter to Santa Claus for me? You write, and I'll tell you what to say. Okay, shoot. Sally began to rattle off her letter to Santa. I've been extra good this year, so I have a long list of presents that I want. Please note the size and the color of each item and send as many as possible. If it seems too complicated, I'll make it easy on you. Just send money. How about tens and twenties? <laughs> Charlie Brown was dismayed. Dismayed. Even his baby sister had become greedy. Writing a letter to Santa Claus was one thing, but demanding cash from him? That was absurd. Oh. <laughs> Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown right there. Charlie Brown returned the pen and the clipboard to his sister and hurried to the auditorium for the first day of her, um, re rehearsals. He arrived just on time, and the rest of the kids were already gathered on stage and in the wings of the theater. He walked over to the director's chair to address the cast, but as he began to speak, Charlie Brown realized that all the kids were goofing around and no one was paying attention to him. He picked up a megaphone and tried again. All right, stop the music. We're going to do this play, and we're going to do it right. Lucy picked up a stack of scripts and began to sign roles. Frida played the innkeeper's wife. Pigpen played the innkeeper. Shermie played the shepherd. Snoopy was delighted to play the roles of all the different animals. And when she came around the lioness, who was also playing a shepherd, Lucy handed him a script and instructed him to memorize his lines so he could recite them on cue. Linus hugged his tr trusty blue blanket and began the protest. This is ridiculous. I can't memorize something like this so quickly. Why should I be put through something with such agony? Give me one good reason why I should memorize this. Lucy glowered at Linus and made a fist, <laughs> curling one menacing finger at a time. I'll give you five good reasons. One, two, three, Four, five. <laughs> Those are our good reasons. Chris is, is not only getting too commercial, it's getting too dangerous. And get rid of that stupid blanket. What's a Christmas shepherd going around to looking like holding a blanket like that? That's stupid. Charlie Brown did his best mm -hmm. to control his temper. All right, let's have quiet. Places, everybody. Shorta, set the mood for the first scene. Shorta sat at his piano and began to play a cheerful jazz tune. The entire cast started to dance all over the place. <laughs> he suggested they rehearse another scene instead, but no one seemed to be act 
able to concentrate. Frida complained that Pigpen's dust was ruining her naturally curly hair. Sally stayed close to Linus, watching every, his every move, and occasionally resting her, her little blonde head on his shoulder. Isn't he the cutest thing? <laughs> Meanwhile, Lucy and Snoopy demanded a lunch break. Good grief. There's no time for foolishness. Let's take it from the top again. Schroeder began to play his jazzy piano again, which sent everyone into the dancing frenzy. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh, sorry. What's the matter? Don't you think it's great? Now, let's face it. We all know that Christmas is one big commercial racket. It's won by a big Eastern syndicate. SCNA, you know that. <laughs> well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial. What our play needs is a proper Christmas mood. We need a Christmas tree. Hey, perhaps a tree. A great big shiny aluminum Christmas tree. That's it. Get one of the biggest aluminum trees that we can find at Walmart. And maybe paint it pink. <laughs> Charlie Brown left Lucy in charge of the rehearsal and set out with Linus to find the perfect tree for their play. The boys finally reached a Christmas tree lot filled with a vast array of shiny aluminum trees. Then in the midst of all the brightly colored metal, they caught a sight of a tiny green pine tree on a simple wooden stand. Gee, I didn't know they still made wooden Christmas trees. <laughs> this one seems like it needs a home. I don't know. Remember what Lucy said? This doesn't seem to fit the modern spirit. I don't care. We'll decorate it, and it will be just right for our play. Besides, I think it needs me. They returned to the auditorium, and Charlie placed the little green tree on Schroeder's piano. We're back. Boy, are you stupid, Charlie Brown. You were supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. You've been dumb before, but now you really did it. <laughs> all the kids laughed at Charlie Brown and his pathetic tree. And then all, and then they all walked away, leaving him alone. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked the little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who understands what Christmas is all about? Sure, I can tell you what Christmas is all about. He walked to the center of the stage where a single spotlight <laughs> shone on him and began to speak. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about. And, and they were sore afraid. The angel said upon them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel in a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Linus picked up his blanket and walked back to the piano. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. All the kids in the auditorium were silent. Charlie Brown picked up his little Christmas tree and smiled. He carried it outside, looked up into the dark night sky, twinkling with millions of silvery stars. Linus is right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. I'll take this little tree home and I'll decorate it and I'll show them this really works for our play. He headed home and became and came upon Snoopy's prize-winning doghouse. Charlie Brown grabbed a big red ornament and carefully hung it on the top of the branch of the Christmas tree. Charlie Brown cringed in dismay as the, the entire tree bent over from the weight of a single ornament. I killed it. Everything I touched gets ruined. He gave up and walked away with his shoulders as bent over as the little tree's trunk. The rest of the Charlie Brown's friends walked over to the tree. Linus leaned over, straightened out the branch, and gently wrapped his blue blanket around the base. I never thought it was such a bad little tree. It's not bad at all. Maybe it was, just needs a little love. The kids looked up at Snoopy's doghouse decorations and then at the tree. Without saying a word, 
They removed the decorations from the doghouse and quickly transformed the sad little tree into a truly beautiful sight, complete with the star on top. And Woodstock put the ornament back on the tree. Did you put it back on Woodstock? Okay. Charlie Brown is a blockhead, but he did get a nice tree. The whole gang circled around the decorated tree and began to hum, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Charlie Brown heard the noise and came over to the group. What's going on here? Charlie Brown could not believe his eyes when he saw how his friend <laughs> had transformed the little tree into something truly special. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. And everyone sang the glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. 